Hi, and thanks for dropping by Visual Art Photography Tutorials. I'm Ray Scott, where today we have a really special macro photography project for you as we photograph a feather. Now we're going to need a few things before we get started, one of them being a feather. And uh, I got this uh, courtesy of my good friends down by the lake, as you can see on the screen right now. But you don't have to, those are ducks, you don't have to have ducks or geese. I mean, there's feathers everywhere, anywhere there are birds, maybe in your park, your backyard, whatever. All you have to do is look around for them. You'll also need an eyedropper. That would really help. Uh, perhaps even a spray bottle. Uh, we're going to be using that too for an image. And then something that's really dark, something like this. This is this black velvet that I, I tend to use for lots of different projects. And it's going to come in handy today. It doesn't have to be black velvet, though. But I think you want a dark surface, or maybe even not. Depends on how far you're going to go with it and exactly what you're going to do. So that's what we're going to need. You're going to need your macro lens, of course, and your camera on a tripod. Now we're going to do things just a little bit differently today because today's video is actually going to be shot in two parts. Uh, the first part is going to be business as usual, the way we usually do things on this channel, as we're going to show uh, you ways that you can take a feather and using macro photography can really bring out some interesting things and you can create some really interesting images. Part two, which is going to be at the very end of part one, uh, the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to do something called focus stacking. Now, if you're not familiar with that, what focus stacking does is it allows you to have everything in focus from front to back, which is a very difficult thing to do in macro photography because there's such a shallow depth of field. Now, focus stacking will allow you to do something like you see there, where that is a feather that is clear from the front right to the back. And that was actually shot uh, using 10 different images. But that's at the very back of this video. Uh, the first part of it, we're going to concentrate on how you actually can take some really interesting macro shots with a feather and sometimes a drop of water or sometimes a little bit more. All right. As usual, questions and comments can be addressed down below. No reason to wait. Let's get going. So what you see here is my light source very low to the feather because I want that light to rake across the feather. I want the detail to be brought out with extreme side lighting. So you saw the light setup and the way I had the light to the side. And that's why I'm showing you this shot because down here on the right hand side is the, is the black velvet that the, that the feather is on. And here you can see that you can see the, each ridge in this feather and that's because the light is coming in from the side so that's what I wanted I wanted to be able to show the texture and the lines okay here's the first real sort of treatment of it I'm showing you this one because again you can see the ridges in the feather with that side lighting but also you can see the light coming through each of those water drops right and that is a really nice effect too. But now let's start getting a little bit more serious as we get a little bit more intricate and a little more creative. Now this is shot at an aperture of f3.2, which is very shallow, and that's exactly what I wanted. All I wanted was for the eye really to end up at the water drop. I focused on the water drop. I've I've moved myself around the feather so that the feather's almost straight on to me, all right? So it's, it's almost like the feather is cradling the water drop, and that's the effect that I wanted. So there it is. And, and the water drop, I mean, look at that. And you can see bubbles in the droplet itself, and you can see just a little bit of detail in the feather. But that was the, uh, that was the effect that I wanted, shooting straight down. On the feather in this water drop i'm showing you this one to show you that you can use the water droplet as a magnifier you see that how it's magnifying what it's covering making everything appear a little bit larger and it's the same shot but this time not in black and white this one black and white and maybe you just want to have it in 
color and see the, the subtle tones, a little bit of brown, and even a little bit of blue, a kind of a bluish uh, tint in the drop itself. This next one, I've moved back a little bit, and this is in black and white again, but I'm going to show you this one because, again, we're looking at the light coming through the water drop. Now, if you look at the water drop, you see the light source in it. Now, for me, I like that. I like the highlight that that light source offers in the water drop. However, you may not want to. And if you don't, you can clone it out. And there it is, gone. You have that light streaming through the water drop, but you don't see the light source anymore. It depends. I kind of like it this way better. It gives the eye something else to work on, but you may prefer something like that. All right. You can also just forget the water for the time being and concentrate on the, the textures and a different angle again of the feather. And I really encourage moving around the feather and moving the feather in different directions and different angles and just trying different things to try to find different compositions. And this one, if you move down the feather towards the right, you can come up with something like that, just strictly a pattern, just, just like that. We're still using side lighting, although not quite as much, but still side lighting so that you can see the ridges. So you want to be able to see uh, the depth of the feather. Now, you want to do water again? Sure, why not? Let's get out that water bottle that I was talking about and take a look at that. Now that really looks metallic-y, doesn't it? It doesn't even look black and white as much as it just looks like silver or something like that. Again, extreme side lighting. You can tell because you can see the ridges very clearly. You can see the shadows. You can see the light coming through each individual water drop. Shot at F16, still a little bit soft here up in the left-hand corner. Could be a little bit more in focus, and that's just a matter of um, making sure that your lens is at the right plane uh, to the feather so that you can get maximum depth of field. Got a little sloppy there. Not too bad, but if you really want it to be tack sharp all the way, be really careful about that. But it's, um, I like it because it's really metallic-y. Over here, okay. In part two of this video, we're going to talk about focus stacking. And this is one image, one shot. And it's shot at f16, but it's macro photography, so there's a very shallow depth of field. And you can see that on this particular shot, I focused on the water drop. And you have a little bit in focus in back, nothing's in focus in front, and it may be the effect that you want. But if you want everything to be in focus, then you're gonna have to focus stack. And in this case, I used 10 different images to get this. And everything in here is pretty sharp. So it just depends on what end result you want. You may want something like this. You may want something like that. Okay, so that concludes part one of this video. And I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you try out different things for your own photography for, with a feather and with water and anything that your mind can create. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about focus stacking, stay tuned for part two. So if you're hanging in for this portion of the video, uh, welcome. It's focus stacking and it's focus stacking 101. It's not going to take very long. If you've never done this before, uh, you'll see it's not really that difficult. And if you have done it before, this may be a different way than you do it because there are a couple of different ways you can do focus stacking. I'm using Lightroom and then I'm going to be bringing it into Photoshop for the focus stacking. Now, here you see a file of 14 images and because I have worked on some images and the final product is here, uh, this is not necessarily what you would be seeing if you were doing it. I'm actually using 10 images. I, I shot 10 different images to focus stack and they are here. One, two, three, four, and so on up to 10. These last four are not to be included. Okay. So typically you would have whatever number of images you've shot, whether it's five, 10, 15, whatever. So you have your 10 images that you want and you go to the develop module in Lightroom and it comes up like this. Now, out of the 10 images, pick an image that you want to work on, one that fits what you're doing. This is the one that fits what I'm doing here. 
Okay, I say that because this is the one where the drop of water is most in focus, and I just happen to want to work on this one, but you could work on another one. Your images, by the way, look like this. The first image you may take, you may want to focus on the very front. It may be the back, you may work in reverse, it doesn't really matter, but you want to go in order. So the first image would be like this for me. I focused on the very, very front part of the image. Then I focused in a little, just a little bit deeper. And I was using an aperture of f16, okay? So, but we're doing macro photography, so not a whole lot is in focus. The next one, like that, a little deeper, and so on, and so on, and so on. And you go through your 10 images, and you finally get to your last image, and the very back is in focus, and nothing much else is. So, the one I wanted to work on would be this one. Now, the, a really important tip when you're doing this kind of thing, when you're doing focus stacking, is that you have to know that in your final product, because when you do focus stack, you are going to lose some of your image, because as it is aligned, and the layers are aligned, and they're blended, and so on, Photoshop is going to move things around a little bit, and you're going to lose your image. So, I've shot this larger than I wanted to. So in other words, what I did was I focused on exactly what I wanted. I made the image, I composed it the way I wanted it to do it. And then I moved everything back a little bit so that you see here in the bottom right hand corner, you actually have some of the surface. That's not going to be in the final image. It's just larger than I need it to be because I know that I'm going to be losing space when I focus stack. So typically the first thing you do, pick one of your images, in this case, one of my 10 images that I took, and you're in the develop module and you develop them the way you want. Now, I've already developed them. Normally you would come in here and all of these uh, things on the right hand side, all of these controls would be at zero. Then you process it the way you want. This is the way I, I processed it. I raised the white point, I lowered the black point, things like that. Then you sync them all. You sync your 10 images. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the command key and I'm going to just command click on all the images, the 10 images that I want to focus stack. Okay, so they're all highlighted. Now, typically, of course, they haven't been synced, so you want to sync them. So you go to this button down here and you hit sync. I'm not going to do that because they already are synced. But you hit that button and you sync them and then all of your images, all the 10 images in my case, will have the same settings. They will all have these settings. So that just makes it a lot easier for your final product. Okay. Once they're all synced, and that won't take very long, go up to the photo button up here and click on the, go to the edit in and then go all the way down to open as layers in Photoshop. And what will happen is all of your, in my case, 10 images will open up in Photoshop and I'm not going to keep you here. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, advance forward once they've all been loaded as layers in Photoshop. So as you can see, all of the layers have been loaded into Photoshop, all stacked on top of each other. And if you want to look at them here, I'm just hitting the option key at the bottom here. And you see one of them, then two, and so on, and so forth. Now what you need to do is you need to shift click on all of the layers. So shift click on the bottom layer to highlight everything. So they're all highlighted now. They're all active. And you go up to edit and auto align layers. And this is the step where you're going to start losing some of your real estate. In this case, I'm just going to put it on auto. We don't have to do anything down here. Uh, this is the, the correct setting for this particular job and you hit okay. And it's aligning the layers. And like I said, this is where you're going to lose some of that image. You see what I mean? Now, you see on the, on the edges, it's really not so nice. You've lost a little bit of your stuff. So now you go to edit again. And remember, all of your layers are still highlighted. They're still all active. And you go to auto blend layers. And it's set here for panorama. We don't want that. What we want to do is stack the image. We're focus stacking. We want seamless tones and colors, even though this is in black and white. We don't need to press content or wear fill transparent areas. So stack images, seamless tones and colors, hit OK. 
and Photoshop will then blend everything together. Okay, so I've sped things up so that you don't have to sit here watching all of these things happen. Now, you see what I mean? Now it's blended, but look at, look at how blurry it is over here and all down below and so on and so forth. That's why you wanted to make the image larger, right? Okay, and now it's just up to you to do what you want with cropping. That's it. It's as simple as that. And, you know, I can show you cropping, but it's not necessarily what you need, what you have to do. I'll make it a little bit smaller here so you can see. And you can bring it in. You know, I'm going to use the original ratio. And you can, you know, set it up the way you want. And, you know, basically hit OK. And then you see once that's rendered, that you're going to have something that will be in focus from front to back and you focus stacked successfully. And then you can, you know, tweak it a bit more and change, you know, make it darker where you want or lighter and all sorts of other things. But that's how you can focus stack. I hope that gets you started on focus stacking if that's something that you desire. It can be a different effect. And of course, as I mentioned before, sometimes you don't want to have everything in focus and you want to have just one little point in focus so obviously you wouldn't be focus stacking but if you want it clear from front to back that's one way to do it so as you can see there are times when you may not want to do focus stacking you just may want to focus in on one little part of that image and throw everything else out of focus that's just one way of creating a macro photography image and of course maybe focus stacking can be part of your arsenal as well as usual, it's always up to the creator. It's up to you how you want to approach your macro photography. But I think that we can all agree that with a feather, and when you can get the detail of the feather, and you can get it up close in a way that your naked eye can't really see it, it can be really fascinating. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.